We are back. Now we're going to go over Wednesday's work. Let's get started. So, now we have characters. A character is a person, animal, or object that an author uses in telling a story. Characters can be real or imaginary. That means nonfiction or fiction. To learn about the characters in the story, pay attention to what they say and do in the story. So we're gonna skip past all of these examples because you guys probably already read them by yourself. Let's get started. One day, Clara walked to the park. Suddenly, she heard noise coming from a bush. It was a boy. He was crying. Are you okay? Clara asked politely. The boy nodded. My name is Herbert. I was going to the park. A big kid took my book. Clara and Herbert walked to the park a little later. Herbert pointed to the boy who took the book. Excuse me, Clara asked. Did you take a book from this boy? I found it on the ground, said the boy. It's a neat book. It is not yours, Herbert said. It's my book. I would like it back. The kid, the big kid looked sad. I am sorry. I did not know it was yours. I am Harry. You can borrow the book if you'd like, said Herbert. Thank you, said Harry happily. They played in the park the rest of the day. How did Herbert probably feel at the end of the story? Do you think Herbert was sad because he found his book? happy because he found his book, happy because he did not find his book, or sad because he did not find his book. We can get rid of two answers, and those would be A and D, because he was pretty happy by the end. Remember, Herbert is the one who lost the book. So would he be happy because he found his book, or happy because he did not find his book? You can interpret this because B, happy because he found his book. Think about it, if you lost something, you'd be pretty happy too, right? Number two, at the end of the story, Harry was happy because, now Harry is the one who took the book. Was he happy because Herbert was mean to him? Was he happy because Herbert let him borrow the book? Was he happy because Herbert took the book from him or because Clara taught him how to read? I'm sorry, my dog just opened the door. <laughs> so Harry was happy because Herbert let him borrow the book. Crystal is new at school. She has no friends and sits alone at lunch. She is sad watching the other students talk and laugh. Crystal has an idea. She walks over to Judah's table and takes his apple. Hey, give that back, says Judah. Only if you sit by me, says Crystal. Judah sits with Crystal and they eat their lunches. Can I have my apple back now, Judah asks. Crystal gives Judah the apple. Next time you want me to sit here, just ask me, says Judah. It was mean to take my apple. I am sorry, Crystal says with a frown. Then she smiles. I am glad we're friends now. Why does Crystal smile at the end of the story? Because Judah took, told a joke? Because she ate Judah's apple? Because she likes mean, being mean? Or because she made a friend? Well, if you use the sentence, she smiles, I am glad we are friends now. The answer is D, she made a friend. Miles used to get bored on the weekends. He and his sister just watched cartoons all day. One Saturday, Miles decided to find something else to do. He walked next door and asked Mr. Sanford if he needed help with anything. You can help me pull those weeds, Mr. Sanford said. Miles and Mr. Sanford pulled all the weeds in the garden. Mr. Sanford thanked Miles for his help. Miles stopped watching cartoons on Saturdays. He liked helping his neighbors better. Why did Miles stop watching cartoons on Saturdays? Because he wanted to help his neighbors? Because he had to do his homework? Because the television stopped working? Or because his mother would not let him? 
if you go back up to the very top right here where it says Miles stopped watching cartoons on Saturdays, he liked helping his neighbors better, you can match the word neighbors and neighbors. Fiona was watching Wally, the class bunny, this weekend. She was excited she did not have pets at home. She would do a good job taking care of Wally. Then maybe her parents would let her have a pet. That afternoon, Thomas came over. He wanted to play with Wally. Fiona took Wally's cage to the backyard. <laughs> she opened it. Wally hopped away as fast as he could. The two kids ran as fast as they could. Wally could go faster. The kids were tired and decided to search the neighborhood. Fiona asked all over about the neighbors, but about a bunny. <clears throat> no one had seen anything. Then Thomas shouted, I found him over here. Fiona ran over to Thomas. He was pointing proudly at Mrs. Felding's garden. Wally was chewing on lettuce. Fiona took Wally home. They played inside the rest of the weekend. Wally did not get away again. Number five, what is the problem that Fiona has to solve in the passage? Well, if you were following along, you would know A, Fiona loses Wally, the class bunny. On to money. A penny is one cent, a nickel is five, a dime is 10 and a quarter is 25. But you guys know this already. These are just some examples of what is shown. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Example, example. Down to question one. Felix has the money shown below in his pencil bag. How much money does Felix have in his pencil bag? If you were to add these all together, you know this is one dollar. Now we have 25 cents. 26 cents, 36 cents, 46 cents, one dollar and 46 cents. Number two, which set of coins shows how to make 55 cents? Well, if we were to add A, we know we have 25 cents, 35 cents, 45 cents. That would not make 55 cents. B, 25 and 25 is 50 cents. That's not correct either. 25 and 25 is 50 plus 10 is 60. That wouldn't be right either. Let's check this last one. 25 plus 25 plus five. Does that make 55? You should have marked D. Question three. In the school store, markers cost 65 cents each and crayons cost 67 each. Which set of coins could Bianca use to buy one marker and one crayon? First, you have to add 65 plus 67. When you do that, you should get $1.32. Now we have to go through each of these and figure out which one equals $1.32. So for A, we have two quarters, six dimes, three nickels, and seven pennies. Two quarters is 50 cents, plus six dimes is $1.10, plus three nickels is $1.25, plus seven pennies is $1.32. We don't even have to do the rest because we know that is the correct answer, yay. Number four, how much are these coins worth? 25 plus 10 is 35. 35 plus 1 is 36. 36 plus 1 is 37 cents. 
These top two both say 37, but make sure you marked B because we don't have $37, just 37 cents. Maggie used the coins below to buy a gumball. How much money did Maggie use to buy a gumball? We're just adding again. On your paper, you should have written the values for each one of these coins above like we do at our math meeting paper. So here you should have written 25, 10, 5, 5, 5, 1, and 1. 25 plus 10 is 35, 40, 45, 50, 51, 52. You should have marked D, 52 cents. Compare and contrast. Let's see, let's see. All right. Friar Woods. Friar Woods is a nice quiet place. Some might call it a neighborhood. All the animals talk to each other. They work together and they play together. They also protect each other from harm. Leo the lion is known as the fighter. He will fight any intruder that comes into Friar Woods without invitation. He works really hard during the day and sleeps soundly at night. Otto the owl hoots when danger is near. Otto sleeps all day and is up all night. Friar Woods is always under a watchful eye. The animals take care of each other and live in harmony. What is similar about Leo and Otto? That's comparing. The answer they gave for this one is that Leo and Otto both live in Friar Woods. Is that correct? It is. Number two, how are Leo and Otto different or contrast? Leo sleeps at night and Otto sleeps during the day. So, if we're going down here to passage one and passage two. Once, a country maid was walking slowly in a field. She had a bucket of milk on her head. As she thought about what she was going to do with the milk, she said to herself, with the money I get for selling this milk, I can buy 300 eggs. These eggs will grow. At Christmas, they will be fine, fat birds and bring a good price. Then I will give the money to buy a new dress. I'll buy a green one because the color is the best. I'll wear it to the fair. At the fair, all the young men will want to dance with me, but I shall refuse everyone because I will look so fancy. She stuck her nose up in the air, forgetting all about the bucket of milk on her head. Over it went and the milk spilled onto the ground. My gosh, what a silly story. The second passage says Angela went to the woods with a bucket. She looked for food. There was none. She could not go home with nothing. Suddenly, she heard a woman. Trade your bucket for this pot, said the woman. Say, cook pot when you want food. When you have enough, say, stop pot. Do not forget. Angela traded and walked home to her mom. She said, cook pot. The pot made good porridge. Angela said, stop pot. They ate well that night. One morning, Angela went to school. Her mom cooked lunch. She said, cook pot. The pot made porridge. Enough pot said the mother. The porridge flowed onto the ground. No, pot, said Angela's mother. The pot kept going. People came to see what smelled so good. They ate all the porridge. The pot bubbled again until Angela came home. Stop, pot, she said. The pot stopped. The village ate porridge for a week. Number one says, what mistake do both the country maid and Angela's mom make in these stories? They forget something. They cannot get any food. They cannot make the pot soup or they spill the milk. 
in both stories, if we're comparing them, they both forget something because the country maid forgot the milk on her head and Angela's mom forgot to say stop hot. So you should have marked A. The wolf and the crane. Wolf had been feasting very greedily. He ate so fast that some food got stuck in his throat. Wolf tried and tried, but he could not get it out. He decided to visit Crane. Crane had a long neck and a long beak. Wolf was sure Crane would reach in and remove the food that was stuck in his throat. If you help me remove this food that is stuck, I will give you a large reward, promised Wolf. Crane thought carefully. It was not a good idea to put his head in Wolf's mouth, but Wolf had promised a large reward. Crane agreed to help Wolf. After Crane had helped Wolf, Wolf started to walk away. What about my reward? called Crane. Wolf spun around and angrily and growled. I didn't eat you. Isn't that enough of a reward? And passage two, a bad deal. Fox was very, very hungry because the dogs in the village made sure that he didn't sneak any food from the villagers. One night, Fox met a fancy house dog that had gotten too far from home. Fox was worried that house dog would chase him away and Fox did not have enough energy to run. He decided he would be very nice to house dog. Fox told house dog how strong and healthy he looked. You can be big and strong too, replied house dog. Come live with me. You will not have to work so hard just to get food. Just do the same things as I do and you will be happy. What must I do? asked Fox. Hardly anything, answered House Dog. Chase squirrels and chipmunks and play with the people in the house. In return, you will get a tasty snacks of every kind and the people will treat you like a member of the family. Fox was so thrilled about his coming happiness that he almost wept. Then he noticed the collar around the house dog's neck. What is that around your neck? Nothing at all, replied the dog. What? Nothing? Oh, just a little something. But please tell me. The people hook my leash to my collar. What? A leash, cried the fox. Don't you go wherever you please? Not always. But what does it matter, replied house dog. It matters a lot. I don't care that much for those fine things if I cannot be free. And Fox ran away into the woods. How are Wolf from Passage 1 and Fox from Passage 2 similar? Is it both Wolf and Fox need to take help? Take the help of other animals? Both Wolf and Fox want something they cannot get? Both Wolf and Fox cannot find food to eat? or both wolf and fox help other animals who are in trouble. Well, we can get rid of D because fox doesn't help others who are in trouble. Wolf and fox, can they find something to eat? Let's go back up because all of that reading, maybe we forgot about what happened in passage two. Wolf had been feasting very greedily. He ate so fast that some food got stuck in his throat. Do you think that that's what it is? No, they both weren't looking for food. B, both fox, wolf and fox want something that they cannot get, or both wolf and fox need to take the help of other animals. I would mark A, both wolf and fox need to take help from other animals. I'm going to skip through one and two on this next couple, so that way this video isn't that long, because if it's super long, I can't post it. So make sure you read those very, very carefully and find the things that are similar and different. We will go over this last one, tell time. On a clock, the short hand points to the hour hand, and the long hand points to the minutes. Here's some examples. I'm gonna stop with this example real quick though because don't forget that when we point to each one of these numbers, you count by fives. So 
Let's point to it and count together. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. <laughs> Half past means 30 minutes after an hour. Quarter past means 15 minutes after the hour. So what time is shown on this clock? 702, 610, 710, 235. If you look at the little hand right here, you know it's between the seven and the eight. So you go with the first number, seven. That's the hour. So now we know it could either be A or C. If it points to the two, is it two or 10? Remember what we just went over. If you point to each number, you count by fives to tell you the minute. So five, 10. It is seven, 10. Question two, Jamie gets home from work in the evening every day at, this t at the time shown on the clock. Which of the following shows the time that she gets home? 5 a.m., 5 p.m., or there is not enough information? Your answer should have been B, 5 p.m. Think about it. I know on the clock that you can't tell if it's 5 a.m. or 5 p.m., but Jamie gets home from work in the evening every day. Remember, when we look at evening or afternoon, we know that it is p.m., not in the morning. 5 p.m. Question three, what time is shown on the clock above? Is it 15 minutes past nine o'clock? Oh, I just gave you the answer. It is 15 minutes past nine o'clock. Miss Nisley's never done that before, right? What time is shown on the clock below? The little hand shows the hour, so it's in between the eight and the nine. So it is eight. It's either C or D. When our minute hand is on the five, we can count by fives to figure out the minutes. Five. 10, 15, 20, 25. It is 8, 25. You should have marked D. Time is shown on the clock below. Again, the hour hand is the little hand in between the 12 and the one. So you should go with the 12. So it's either B or D. And again, the minute hand is on the nine. That does not mean that it is nine minutes. Let's count by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. It is 12, 45. D. And that is it for Wednesday. Thank you for watching, you guys. Don't forget to keep looking to see if there's any more information on Class Dojo and keep up the great work. We'll see you soon, second grade. Bye-bye.